Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'll be reviewing this 2.5 inch Parrot 120 toothpick class quad from HGLRC. I've tested quite a few bind and fly HGLRC quads and without exception they are well built and fly beautifully. And this Parrot 120 is no exception. It's really nicely put together and the tune out of the box is excellent on 3S HV LiPos. I've tried 2S and it's perfectly flyable but it's a bit underpowered despite being a bit lighter. And there's no video noise and it does exactly what it's supposed to do without having to fiddle about with anything. Just bind it, set up the beta fly modes and go fly. Now initially I was a bit concerned that this flexible TPU canopy would aggravate the jello on this Turbo EOS 2 CMOS camera, but it was totally fine. And I've had great fun flying this around during the week, dodging the awful weather we've got at the moment. Let's take a closer look at what we've got here. It's a 120 millimeter frame made from two millimeter thick carbon, which is pretty stiff and it's not too flexible. And all the edges are nicely chamfered and it's just well finished. And with these Jamfan 65 millimeter props, it puts it firmly in the two and a half inch toothpick class. The 16 by 16 flight stack is all soft mounted, as you can see here. And on the bottom, we've got the HDLRC FD13 Amp 4-in-1 ESC. And the quality of the soldering on here is just fantastic. Everything's tidied away very nicely. And this is running BL Heli S and supports up to D-Shot 600, and it will deliver 13 amps continuous and 15 amp peaks. And you could run this board off 2 to 4 S LiPos. Next up on the stack is the HDLRC FD411 flight controller, which is an F4 flight controller using the STM 
F411 CEU6 processor and it's got a 6000 SPI MPU. And this comes with a Betaflight OSD and is flashed with Betaflight 404 on the HGLRC-F411 target. And again, this flight controller could be powered off 2 to 4S LiPos. And very usefully, the flight controller will power the receiver up from the USB port, which is very useful. So it means you won't need to connect a battery to set up the beta flight receiver and modes. Now, these motors are a really interesting choice. They're HGLRC FD1103 8000 kV and they're specced for 2 to 3S. Now, initially, this seems a bit odd given that the flight stack can be powered on 2 to 4S. But 8000 kV is a sweet spot for running 2 or 3S without having to change the tune. If they'd gone for something like, say, a 6000 kV to fly on 4S, I suspect it'd need a retune to run on 2S. And to be honest, flying this on 3S, these don't feel like they lack any power. And with these Gemfan 65mm props, they just quietly sing and have got loads of punch. Two blade props have just got so much less mass, inertia and drag, and they change speed really quickly and it makes the parrot very, very responsive. And it's fantastic fun to fly. At the top of the stack here is the VTX, and this is the HGLRC FD 400 milliwatt that's power switchable between pit 25, 100, 200 and 400 milliwatts using tramp protocol. Or you could just manually change power channels, power and channels using the switch on the top here. It's got 40 channels and there's this simple sleeved dipole antenna which is fixed to the VTX with a UFL or an IPEX connector, which is quite nice. They've used a Cadex Turbo EOS 2 FPV camera, which is fine, but I've always found the colours a bit saturated for my taste, and I think the Foxia Predator Nano 4 is a better camera, but it's more expensive and maybe a little bit heavier. And there's not a whole lot of adjustment here but it will be easy to carve out a bit of the TPU at the top to give you a bit more up tilt if you need it. And squeezed in the top of the canopy, just under there, is an FR Sky XM Plus receiver. But you can order this without a receiver if you want, or you could use a free Sky. And the canopy nicely holds the VTX and the receiver antennas and it's got this rather nice shark fin to make turtle mode easy to use. And initially, I was a bit worried that this flexible 3D printed TPU canopy would aggravate the usual CMOS camera jello, but it's quite stiff. And the print, I think it's just a little bit thicker on the sides here. And as you can see here, there's plenty of camera protection. So you are unlikely to smash the lens in a crash. And as you can see from the flight footage, there's just no video noise. Probably because HDLRC have fitted this 470 microfarad, 25 volt low ESR capacitor on the back here. And the whole quad weighs, well, let's have a quick look, shall we? That is 58 grams, which is very good. And this is in the 95 pounds or $120 price range but use the links in the description to check out the latest prices and the overall build quality is very good for an ultralight toothpick. Some toothpick quads suffer cut corners to get the weight down but the Parrot is great quality. HDLRC have used tape to hold the motor wires in place which is my preferred way of doing it and there's a good silicon anti-slip battery pad on the bottom. So are there any downsides? Well, as I said before, there's not much camera up tilt adjustment and it could really do with a zip tie to give some strain relief on the battery connection. And a buzzer would have been quite nice as well. But there's nothing remotely seriously wrong with this. It's a little screamer of a toothpick that manages to be very light 
without any nasty compromises. So well done HDLRC. I think you've pretty much nailed it with this one. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you next time.